Kaya... Share this to a few groups. I'm actually just about to share it to one group, actually. be one where I can and cannot post. Excuse my hair. But I ain't hear about my hair. <laughs> Let me share this to my home. I'll share it one more place and then I'll be ready. So what we're doing today is a cat resize and um, I heard like you know different uh things when it comes to like resizing resizing caps some people like them um, some people don't I'm going to put my phone up here because I need to get some continuous content as we go but um, I'm gonna show y'all how I do it. So, um, somebody was saying that they didn't really understand how this worked because they were like, you know, and I, I get it, it makes sense. It's like, well, how how is that making the cap necessarily the circumference of it smaller when you're taking the weight out here? Um, I honestly, I do not have an explanation for you for that. But what I will say is that I do know that this technique works. Um, you can do it with any size wig, but the thing is when you start to um, resize it based upon how small the head is, that's going to, um, what I'm trying to say, that's going to change like how much of the bulk you have to remove if that makes sense because if you guys notice this is this is the bulk in here so what we ultimately want to do is get it to where the cap is just kind of flush like that right so we're going to grab back here now this is not going to leave the wig bulky at all and the thing that I like the most about using this particular technique is the fact that um, you're not removing any of the hair, so the wig is still full. Now, could you come in and just cut this out and do all that? You absolutely could. You absolutely could. You could just go in, hey Nikia, you could just go in and you can cut that, but I personally don't like to like cut into the wig. So if I can resize it like this, then this is how I'll do it. So this right here is, I said I was gonna do a video on this because this is like super, I've never resized a cat to this magnitude um, using this technique, but I know it'll work. So this is a medium size unit and the customer is actually a 20.5 and when she told me i was like jeez i'm like i probably just don't have to cut into the cat but the more i thought about it i was like no that just means that you need to go in and you may have to pull more to make it fit so what usually happens is and this is why 
this technique works is because usually the bulk is in the cap itself, right? So my outer part is good. So what I do is I'm gonna pin the outer part down. And the, the key to how I get them to fit for the different sizes, now I've never done one 420. Now I'm gonna say that, but I know it can work. So what I'm gonna do is you wanna put it on and you just wanna make sure that it's, you know, fitting like it needs to. Hold on, y'all, I got it. I'm working on other wigs over here too because I'm getting ready for my wig sale. So I'm bleaching some not something to the side. So I'm gonna take my T-pins. And I already pinned it on the side and I'm gonna pin it back here and back. So now, the wig cap itself is it's fitting. If it's on there, it's fitting. This is a 20 and a half. I don't think I can show y'all the size. Okay, you can see it. This is a 20.5. It's fitting. Because when we think about the circumference, the cap has stretch to it. So that's why it can adjust, right? Uh, depending on how big or how small. But again, the bulk is like back in here. So first things first, you wanna make sure that you use a thread that um, is pretty much, I could use black thread if I wanted to, but I'm not, I'm gonna just go ahead and use the brown thread. I did let this customer know that I was gonna do like a cap resize on it. So she, um, she knows, my biggest thing is when I do cap resizes, I want my stitches to look like me inside. So when I stitch, I'm not just, you know, I'm truly taking my time to, to stitch the tracks together. This technique is like super easy. And that's the other thing that I love about it so much. Because I was, at one time, I was going in and I was like cutting the caps up and doing all this. And it was a mess really because then I found myself, now I'm cutting into the hair, and this is an expensive wig. I don't wanna be cutting into the hair, right? So I was like, okay, this is not, I mean, I ever did that one technique, I know y'all seen it, where you do the pivot, and you pinch it, and you know, and yeah. I don't, I don't like none of that, I don't like none of it. <laughs> so this is just what I do, it's not law. You don't have to, you don't have to do it, but I'm telling y'all, I done did it on multiple wigs and it works it works um i even had a lady recently that bought a stock unit and hey chicky that bought a stock unit from me and um she was a small she was a 21 and a half and um i was like oh i can resize the cap for you and she sent me a message and she was like it fit perfect and i was like yeah i know it was though so wasn't really worried about it this is gonna be a little bit of a challenge because like I said, I've, I haven't took a unit from having this much bulk in it, right? But I know it can be done. I know it's, if anything, this may take me a little bit longer to do just because we trying to take it so small. But I'll do a few rows so y'all can see it. And I'm not sure if I'll be able to get rid of all the weight or the bulk uh, while we on live, because like I said, I may have to go up a little bit on it, but I promise y'all this works. And I mean, there, this, like I said, this technique is not law. You know, it's not like this is the only thing that you can do. Some people don't mind going in and, like you could go in and you could really, you could cut the cap. You could go in and you could, could cut the cap if you wanted to. I'm not doing that. I don't, like I said, that's just not my thing. I really don't care to do that. So, um, anyways, I'm going to take these straps out. And you want to, like, depending on how much uh, bulk that you have back there, I usually take about uh, anywhere between two to three tracks at a time. 
give or take. Now, this is what a person would consider to be, I guess, a pre-made unit. This is directly from one of my vendors. However, I consider this more of a custom unit because these units do come in different sizes. This particular wig was just created in a medium. But I can get these same units from my vendor in a small, medium, and a large. This is Indian hair. They're really pretty. This is part of my luxury line. And um, yeah, these units are the bomb. I still do all the customizations for these wigs though. So this is like just a part of me customizing. So y'all see all that weight in there? So we just gonna, we gonna take the weight out. How we gonna be able to take the weight out is just by sewing these tracks together. But we're gonna start at the bottom. When you start at the bottom and you work your way up so that you have less bulk up here so that it's flat, okay? So I'm gonna start at the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and just grab three tracks because we're trying to take so much of the bulk out. And I'm gonna start sewing like that. Now again, uh, when I'm doing these, I'm making sure that, uh, sorry guys, when I'm concentrating, I can't really talk. <laughs> I'm making sure that uh, my stitches are gonna be neat. So I'll come back or get a little bit closer so y'all can actually see my stitching on this. But I feel like that's one key, is making sure that my stitches are neat. And the reason why I like to make sure that my stitches are neat is because a person is gonna look inside their wig. You know what I mean? And when they look inside the inside of their wig, you don't want it to be looking all tacky. You know, you want it to look, you want it to have good craftsmanship. Or at least I do. And I'm just trying to kind of watch that comb down there at the bottom. I feel like the bottom stitch is kind of the hardest to me. And this, this is not a hard technique at all. But I feel like this particular stitch is the stitch that, because it's so close to the bottom, This is the stitch that I'm like really just trying to make sure that it's together. Now, what's gonna happen is as I go up the wig, the bulk is going to start to remove. Like y'all gonna see like all this extra slack that I got in here is gonna be gone. like about this technique is that you can always take these stitches out you're not damaging a wig you're not going in you're not you're not cutting it all to pieces you know what I mean But it does take a little a little bit longer to remove the bulk doing it like this. But I feel like, to me, it's just my personal preference because like I said, I've done that where you go in and you be cutting it and all that. I don't like that. I just felt like that just drove me crazy. 
And it could be that, you know, I'm just not skilled at that because I haven't done it enough. But yeah, I'm just personally not a fan of it. So I know it's looking a little bit crazy right now, but it's okay. Because it's going to start to gather. And it's going to make sense when it does. I'm making sure that my stitches are tight. And when I get down to the end, we want to make sure that we uh, we knot it so that it doesn't come on loose. Y'all got some questions? If you got some questions, feel free to ask. I know when I first seen this technique, I was like, you're right, how that work? Like, <laughs> and uh, the reason how I ended up, you know, coming across it was because I had some wigs that I was trying to resize and I had to get all that, you know, go in, cut them up and do all that. And uh, like I said, I just, I personally did not like it. I didn't like, I didn't like how it looked on the inside. I seen girls do it. I felt like it was just too much work. And I'm like, man, I'm like literally going in and I'm cutting this wig to pieces, you know. Now the other way, which this is a way that you could do it too, is you can go in and you can cut this bottom part off and then you can kind of like pull the rest of that and sew it back together now that's another option that is another option now i do that way is okay i like that way that's cool so i'm gonna come in i'm gonna grab three of these you may have to like really come up right because I've never done one that had to be this small <laughs> but I know I know it can work and just keep doing that this technique is uh, really beginner friendly Cause you don't have to be like this crazy uh you don't have to be this crazy wig guru to do this can see it but I can feel it getting tighter just with that with these couple of tracks that's been sung so far and the stitching looks really good Oh, that stitching look good. I ain't gonna lie, I mean, the stitching is what turned me up for real. <laughs> I used to hate watching people do sewing ends and they be just doing them sloppy stitches. I'd be like, girl, <laughs> it should be looking nice all the way through. But I know people don't care about that. I'm like, girl, they ain't worried about them stitches, but I am. Think about that calm bed down there already.
take your time. You have to take your time because you want to be able to see how many tracks you actually grabbing. You don't want to just, you know what I mean, be pulling, pulling with, with the hopes that you get in two or the hopes that you get in three. You want to actually know. Like, I know that when I'm going in here and I'm sewing, I know that I'm sewing three tracks. Or three rows, whatever you want to call it. creating like an actual loop to go through. this is the biggest thing right here is just really taking your time I feel like because it's an easy technique it can be something that you feel like you could just kind of rush through and then once you get the rushing you'll start to uh, you'll start to pick up areas that you don't mean to stitch you know what I mean? And then you be like, dang, that don't look like, you know, how you want it to or whatever. So even though it's an easy technique to do, you still want to take your time. You know, I feel like speed means nothing if you don't do it right. You know, it's like you could be fast at something and do a sloppy job or a terrible job, you know? And you could be slow and do an amazing job, you know? I'd rather you take your time and do it than to be trying to rush. So I'm feeling good about my bulk leaving. I feel like I can skip one row and I'm going to come in and I'm going to gather a couple of more rows. But yeah, I'm feeling good about the bulk leaving because the cap is getting wet. And that's what we want. <clears throat> I'm going to skip a row. She threw me with she she threw me with this one though, cause she said a small and then she came back and she was like a twenty point five. I'm like, girl, <laughs> that's an extra small. <laughs> but I got you, I got you, cause I feel like a twenty, you know, taking a wig from a, a twenty two to a twenty one. Oh, let me check my hair, y'all.
Eggs off. Y'all got questions? Or are y'all asking me questions and I just don't see them? So I left to reveal questions. No. All right. Keep going. Y'all get all type of needles and TPNs at my house. My dude was like, man, you just gonna hurt somebody one day. <laughs> You want your thread to be, you know, long enough so you can get through the, the whole uh, row. That's how I usually like mine to be. And I'm using um, double uh, threading, but usually I don't. Usually I only I start with two, and then so I'm gonna skip that one, and we gonna come here. here I'm like literally starting on the edge y'all that's how you want to do it start at the edge joining the tracks.
you don't have to be a rocket scientist to do this <laughs> okay now I'm gonna start recording on my phone on my other phone let's see I'm gonna go over here to IG oh she's skinny I'm sorry that don't mm -mm. Let me get my uh let me get my light because I need a little bit more light to record. sure y'all can still see it so yeah I'm good just gonna start getting some content here so I don't know if y'all can see the cap actually gathering but on this particular part I decided to leave a weft in between because my cap is actually starting to pull together This is what I was meaning when I was saying sometimes you have to do a few tracks. You know, like on some wigs, depending on the size that I'm going, I'll do two rows at a time. But because this unit is needing to be taken in so much, I'm doing three. I'm going to turn it. So y'all can actually see it. And I don't know if y'all can see, that one is the one that I didn't grab. So I left, a, I left that space in between. But my stitches are super neat, okay? And that's how you want it to be. You want your stitches to be neat, y'all. Whatever you do, don't just come in and just start sewing and, you know, because you need to be You need to be able to stitch it right. This is grabbing so good, yeah. <laughs> I would not lie to y'all, telling y'all this technique is bomb. Look at it. Flat. No bulk. I'm not cutting the hair up, which means that because I'm not cutting all into the hair, what does that mean for me? That means that my customer is not going to have an extreme amount of shedding. I didn't have to go in and, and be a genius to do this. Like, this is literally so beginner friendly. I'll say that video.
I'm hoping I don't run out of bread because I, I do not want to have to like okay starting in the middle All the way to the edge. Then I think I'm gonna do these last two right here. But my cap is resized, y'all. Like literally, this cap is resized. This is a 20.5, baby. Listen, tell y'all this technique works. thread because I, I made it to the end but barely so I really don't want to come up here and create any more bulk so I think I'll do one more right here and I'm only gonna grab two when I grab right there hey Miss Tina there before it's no longer there we don't have that it's gone it's gone this is a 20.5 wig head Because that row was a little bit longer, that's why I gotta go back. And, um, <clears throat> the test right there. Actually, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna gather this right in here just because I see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it because I'm real particular like that. Because remember I said, you want to come all the way to the edge. So I can see right here. We need to gather right there. So I'm going to gather it. I want to make sure that the bulk is gone.
also because I felt like on this end, I kind of ran out of thread right here. So I'm just gonna go back and kind of just make sure that uh, my stitch is good in this area. I'm still using that crossover stitch. Like the whole entire time, I'm using that crossover stitch. And from there, you can wrap a few times to knot it. It's the same technique I use when I do sew ins. And they be in there. Because my one lady, she was like, girl, I don't know what you did when you stitched this hair in, but it took Jesus in 12 to get it. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's how it's supposed to be. So I'm going to go right here, and it's going to be our last one. We're going to start stitching. This is our last one. And we just taking two on this one and stitching. Them stitches is good and close together. They firm. And that's what you want, yeah. Keep them firm, keep them close together. Honestly, you I probably would have been done a lot faster if I wasn't on live because I'm like you know kind of trying to talk y'all through it too so y'all can see it as I go I promise y'all this is it
talking about all that bulk is gone. Look how flat that wig is. Come on now. I'm trying to tell y'all. And this was taking this wig literally. We took this wig down two and a half inches. That's a lot. But look how neat my stitches is. Like, I don't play about these stitches. Period. Period. See that? <laughs> Ow! Look. Look. See that? Look how firm it is. Firm, baby. What? That's what we do. I'm trying to tell y'all. Now I gotta take this video and put it on YouTube, cause it's the truth. <laughs> nah, for real, I'm just playing. But no, I am. <laughs> Let me give me another video. Okay. So I can show y'all how firm it is. Look at the stitches. See the stitches? Now look, where's the bulk? It's gone. We don't have it. It's not floppy like a sock. It's fitting. See that? It's out of there. This cap now fits a 20 and a half. I'm telling y'all, I'm hands down, this is it for me. Like I'm never going in and cutting the cap up and never, never ever again in life. This is it. Y'all see it? I can put my straps back in. She gonna get this wig and just be as happy as she wanna be. Because for small heads, it is it's a it's a it's a battle trying to find wigs that fit. Look at that. Guess what else we don't have? We don't have excessive gathering in there y'all see that i need y'all to see that y'all need y'all to see that because i think that's the biggest misconception with this technique is that it's like well how is that really making the cap smaller because the pull is it's not just pulling what's in the middle it's pulling the entire cap together I, like I said, I can't explain it, but I know it works. <laughs> That's all I got. I just promise to God, I know it works. So, also notice that it's not any excessive gapping in here. See how flat that's laying? If the cap was too big for the wig still, it would be gapped in there. It would be like bulging. You see how flat that's laying? Because it fits. Like I said, I, I can't explain it, but I know it works because it's gathering the cap together. And yeah, that's it. That's it. Y'all got it. Y'all seen it live. Y'all seen it live. All right. All right, y'all.